We're going, uh, we're going well. We are uh, almost in the middle of the Pacific. Not exactly, but quite soon we'll be in the middle of the Pacific. We are here. In two days we may be close to uh, Nemo Point. And uh, probably in eight days we will be in uh, Cape Horn. What for it? And then from uh, Cape Horn to Itaja it's roughly one more week, so we can say that in a bit more than two weeks we will be in Itaja, probably, if everything goes well. Explain me your role on board. So my job on board is to... The call is... Uh, the name is Navigator. So my uh, job is to find uh, the best way to go to the finish. The quickest way to go to the finish is probably to beat the other competitors, of course. So for that, uh, I use uh, many tools, many softwares. First of all, I use some software to download some uh, weather information, like like this software, for example. Or also this one, so the last thing. This one is Predink Queen, and this one is named Quid Squid. So then there is different provider. So I use uh, the GFS model, which is an American model. I use also ECMWF, which is a European model. I use Arpege, which is the French model, and the Icon, which is a German model. All of them, they cover all the Earth. So we can have data everywhere on us. So, and obviously, the main data is wind. Uh, and then we also look carefully at the isobar, at the barometric pressure, because it's very useful to understand exactly what's going to happen in the next few days, to understand how we're going to move the high pressure and the low pressure. And then we use also uh, the waves because there is also some uh, sea state uh, data on the uh, current. And also in the uh, sometimes specifically here in the Southern Ocean, we look also sometimes at the sea temperature to make sure that there is, there is some loop of current or there is not loop of current with very very cold water, which could bring some uh, iceberg. But as you can see, the red area is the forbidden area for us on the screen uh, from the organization. So we are not allowed to go in that area. Uh, so we are not supposed to, to see ice. But in case of I checked, if there is no very, very cold weather. So I use this tool to download. Uh, we call that grid file, which is a format of this of the small barbs you see on the screen. And then I put this file on Adrena, which is another software here. So I can show you again. We can show again the, the wind on the barometric pressure information here. You have also the rain in blue, which is helpful, for example, to show exactly where we have a cold front, for example, with heavy rain. And then I run, a, we call that a routing from a start point, which is obviously our current position of the prime time, to uh, the finish or next web button, like the tape on for us now. And then the software is going to calculate the best route, the quickest route, from now to the uh, to the next web button. And then we are going to work on that route, because maybe that route will not be very suitable for us, even if the software finds it as the quickest. But maybe the sea state will be too bad, uh, the wind will be too strong, or the wind direction will be not suitable. So we will have to do too many maneuvers, like jibes or tacks, or too many sail changes. So maybe uh, then I will try to update a bit that route to make sure that we will be able to uh, achieve it uh, quite easily. Sometimes the best route is almost impossible to achieve it because there is so many maneuvers, so many set change, uh, bad sea state, uh, thing like that, then you, 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 you can almost say, okay, it's, it's not possible to happen, that it's too complicated. Sometimes uh, it's important to understand that it's not a good idea to row in a 45 knots of wind on six meters of uh, swain, so, so you have to update a bit your, what, to avoid this around. 
want to make your life a bit more easy. And then I use other tools. Um, so this looks very old style uh, weather chart, but I really like them. So this one is from the New Zealand uh, weather service. And you can see there is just on the screen a, a very small green uh, point, which is our current position. So it's very uh, old style, but it's very useful because you have uh, all the front on the chart. So we can see there is a very small weak uh, one form just behind us. And uh, it's very helpful to understand clearly what is the current situation of the weather, the big picture of the weather pattern around us. So this is an analysis chart, but then we have a forecast chart in the same way. So every time I put the green dot on the chart by hand, and show bam, and there we are, where we will be. It's a forecast chart for understanding exactly how we move the systems. And for example, obviously the, the New Zealand charts are only around New Zealand, so it covers only the west part of the Pacific Ocean. So then we will swap to the Chile weather service chart. And I do the same with the Chile weather service chart that could our position for understand exactly uh, what will happen uh, on us. And then I have a few other tools. We use a lot of uh, satellite picture. And, and then we link, we link, I link everything together. I link this uh, satellite picture with uh, the analysis chart, for example. Uh, if I want to understand exactly where is the uh, warm force uh, behind us, uh, the analysis chart is only every six hours, so 0, 6, 12, and uh, 18 UTC. But the satellite picture is almost real time, or assuming it's late. So then I can exactly monitor where is the, uh, the warm fault, or if I have like a, a, a clear sky bubble and I want to avoid it because I guess there is less wind or something like that, or if there is some squalls, I can see them almost in real time, or then I just have to put the pin here with our position. And then we can try to avoid things and can try to, again, understand a bit more what we have. I have some other course so this. So this is still Adrena, but I have downloaded uh, satellite, wind satellite analysis. So it's a kind of picture from the, taken from a satellite and that show um, the wind speed on wind direction. Unfortunately, it's only two, two times per day, so it's not super useful. As you can see, you only have some... Uh, it's a, it doesn't cover uh, all the area, it's just like a corridor. But sometimes, by luck, and it was the case a few hours ago, you have uh, a wind information which is not so old, like it was uh, three or four hours old and it covers our harbor, so it is very useful because like that you can understand exactly which wind uh, where you have here on the screen and then again you can link that to the grid file to make sure that your grid file is right because the grid file is only informative data and sometimes could be wrong, could be not so accurate and then you can check that your grid file, your front, for example you can see there on the strings of one phone behind us, we are here on the one phone behind us, it's just, just there with a massive shift on the other side on much less wind. And uh, the shift is looks much more important than the grip file show. Like that we can uh, try to update or make the forecast a bit like way. Right. Again, it, it helps to, to, to bring a bit of a uh, uh, right. I would say yes, seamanship, because if you just look at the red 5, the red 5 is a bit wrong, everything is wrong. When you match and when you link different data all together, we can see sometimes there is few, maybe few mistakes or few misunderstandings the red 5. So then the red 5 is used to do the routing and then your routing will be wrong, of course, so then you can update that. And then once you see a nice route, you propose to the failure, Yes, and then what I what I like to do, we can see on the screen here, and then I make some uh, drawing on the screen in green. So the green line with some commands. 
you put your mouse on the green line, you have some command. And it's helpful because like that, I, I do that for the next few days. Plus that, it's kind of a, like a, it's a road book. Right? So to make sure that I don't miss something, for example, uh, for the next few days, we will have a low pressure coming on the tropics uh, um, through the uh, South Pacific. And I just put a few days ago that part uh, here to make sure that I will not forget to look carefully at this low pressure because it could really change the strategy in this area. So finally, I can almost cancel it now because it's not really uh, reliable because the low pressure will be a bit more to the east, so it will not concern us. But the, when I have a doubt, or when I have a question or something like that, I write it on my roadbook to make sure I will not forget it later. And then I do uh, almost every watch change with the crew. I do a small update, a quick briefing, like just a few minutes, what's going to happen the next few hours for us, or for them in the, during the watch. And also what's going in the next few days, what's the big picture. Like, and then they still have access because we have a screen here at the back of the boat, but we have the same computer with the same screen in the cockpit. And like that, they still can read the workbook if they forget something, if they want to make sure. They just have to put the mouse on the small uh, drawing, and then they will have a quick dash speed tunnel to us where it was. And then I can go to my bench. And last. During the last few days, we are, uh, the fleet is very compressed together, so it's not about strategy, but it's a good tool to, uh, to follow uh, the fleet, the competitors, which is this one. So for now, this tool uses uh, IES data from the other boats, and we can monitor exactly the speed and the heading of the other competitors, and we can quickly see if we are faster, slower, if we are higher on the work. Right now, we just have Pryo down on the spring because the others are a bit too far away, so we don't have, we don't get their highest at all. This Pryo term is just one mile, so then we can see them, but we can also confirm with the number if they are sailing a bit higher or if they are sailing a bit slower, faster or something. Please try. And as a backup, I use one more tool. And more software. Which is Expedition, which is hopefully the same software as on Adrena. So I can uh, run routing, I can visualize the uh, wind that out. Uh, just to make sure that uh, I don't miss something. I do uh, all my work, all the routing is done on Adrena on both Expedition. Okay. How can you have that? Great work, man. Where we sit.